Hi, this is lesson 323, expanding the trig table. Uh, this is a continuation of the last lesson uh, where we were learning a little bit more about angles, slopes, and uh, slope angles, or slope angles and slope ratios. Uh, we initially started with uh, these uh, four uh, angles uh, that we drew. I think this was a couple uh, lessons ago and uh, we gathered some information trying to organize as much as possible uh, we expanded these by looking at the complements of these angles so uh, as hopefully you remember this uh, let me see if I can get all those all right so we have uh, we started with the 11 degree and the complement of 11 degrees. Complement meaning uh, complementary angles, if you remember, are two angles that add up to 90 degrees. So 11 degrees and 79 degrees give us our 90 degrees. All right, so these would be considered complementary to each other. So if I know the slope angle is 11 degrees and I, it has a slope ratio of 1 over 5, then the complement which is 79 degrees, will then be the reciprocal of 1 over 5, which is 5 over 1. All right, so you should notice uh, all these are reciprocals. All, right, all these are reciprocals. And the angle, slope angles, these are all complementary to each other. All right, so this is the information we gathered last time. Uh, the list is growing. Um, and as you can imagine, these are not the only angles that exist, right? What about uh, 12 degrees or what about uh, 20 degrees? What about 19 degrees? So there's a lot of degrees uh, are, are slope angles missing uh, and each one has its own slope ratio. Uh, but for now, we're, we're trying to just learn a little bit more about these. Hopefully we could um, find kind of faster ways or shorter ways to utilize the same information. All right, so uh, if, if you haven't already done so, uh, you want to make sure you add all these to the trig table. That was the or organization uh, chart that we started last time. Um, in case uh, you need a kind of a, an explanation of why it's called trig table, I know some uh, students have been asking this uh, so trig, uh, this term trig is short for trigonometry, right? And so trigonometry is the study of the measures of triangles, All right? So uh, that's where this trig comes from. So a trig table, trig table then helps us organize that information, right? It helps us organize the measurements of the triangles, specifically slope angles and slope ratios. All right, so that's what our trig table offers us. Um, what we've created is kind of just an abbreviated abbreviated version of it. Uh, the actual trig table is quite large, uh, but this is what we're going to use kind of to help us uh, with some of the problems we're going to be doing. So this is the same organizer as before, except I've updated it uh, with um, all the information uh, that we kind of need that will come up on specific problems that we're going to be doing. So uh, what you definitely should need is this information in your notes so that when you come across a problem, if you come across a problem that has these specific angle measurements or these specific angle or slope ratios, then you could use this, these notes to help you. Right. I don't expect you to have, I almost prefer you do not memorize any of this. Uh, you should just be keeping it, these in your notes for now until we find uh, easier ways of doing this. So um, I'm going to give you some time to kind of copy this down. Uh, most likely you're going to have to pause it. So I'm going to do this in sections. So this is kind of like the first half, which most of these are the angles that you should already have. Um, you'll notice I've added the zero, the zero and the eight degrees, um, and so all the triangles pretty much look the same. We've just changed the the information on them. 
uh, but the same those rise and runs should be the same that you see in the slope ratios. So definitely this information you need. I would recommend having the fractions and the decimals. Uh, they come in handy. And you should notice some of these are approximated. You'll notice the squiggly equal sign versus some of them are a solid equal, which means uh, there is a difference. The approximated, the squiggly ones, means there's actually more numbers that are being um, either removed. So they're, they're, in this one, there's actually more threes, but we don't need to write all of them. All right, so uh, I would definitely pause it if you're copying that information down. Uh, I'm going to move it up Let's see, to some more. Now, 55 is definitely new. Uh, so the ones in yellow were the original ones we started with. Uh, and then the ones in blue are the complements of those, which I mentioned in the last video. So those are all reciprocals of each other. Uh, the, the blues are reciprocals of the yellows. Uh, and then the, you'll notice the one in the middle, blue and yellow, for those of you that know your colors, makes green. Uh, 45, the reciprocal or the complement of 45 is 45, is itself. So which makes sense because... 1 over 1 is a reciprocal of 1 over 1. You get the same answer. All right, so you'll notice some of these have uh, fractions and some decimals. Um, and some of them, this one, when you get to this one, 70 degrees, this is an actual decimal, 13.737. Uh, that's not a comma in there. So be careful when you copy these down. You want to make sure they're as accurate as possible. Um, and then, let me move this up, I think 89 degrees, I think, is the last one. All right, so definitely make sure you have this information down. Uh, while you're copying that down, I'll just mention a couple things. Um, uh, you should notice the slope ratios. Uh, you notice at 89 degrees, as this, as this angle gets bigger, uh, you notice our slope ratio is a large number, 57. Uh, as, as soon as we go to smaller angles, you'll notice this decreases. 10, 8.3, 5, 3, right? 2.7, 2.5, right? This, the slope ratio is actually getting smaller. It's getting small until we reach one. You'll notice Everything is reducing down to 1, and then once we go below 45 degrees, everything you'll notice is a decimal, 0 0.4, 0 0.3, 0 0.2. Um, you'll notice it's not where we do not have negative values here. So 0 is where we begin. Everything's going to be bigger than 0, and so everything's going to be decimals until we reach 45 degrees. It's going to be at 1, and then at that point, it's going to keep going high. You'll notice I stopped at 89, uh, mainly because we cannot have a 90. All right, so it doesn't make any sense. You can't have a 90, 290 degrees in your triangle, right? Because these lines will never connect. So it's impossible to have 90 and 90. So, uh, but we could get pretty close, 89.999. And so that would take this number even higher. All right, so we're going to use that information um, to, now that we have an updated trig table, uh, so hopefully you have all that information near you. Uh, there are, I believe there's five, six, seven uh, practice problems for us to go over. Um, I'm going to give you some time, um, well, I'm going to let you know when to pause if you, if you need to. I really think you should try to do these on your own, um, but I'm, I'm most likely I'm still going to go over these. So in this case, um, so this is, here's the first three. Uh, we are looking to determine the values of x, y, or theta, um, whichever one's uh given to us in the picture. And so our goal is to figure out the missing values. 
and most likely we're going to end up using our trig table to help us. All right. So uh, if you're going to try this on your own, uh, I would probably pause it at this moment, uh, give it a go, and then see if you get these correct. All right. So I'm going to go start going over these. Um, let's see. I'm going to zoom in a little bit. All right. So on the first one, uh, again, I'm the first thing I notice is 70 degrees. Um, so that pops into my head, something I need to focus on. Um, I also know I'm missing uh, this side over here. So uh, really the first thing that I'm thinking of doing is setting up a proportion. Uh, so in this one, since this is right in front of us, this is going to be y over 10 because that's the rise and the run of this uh, triangle. And then what I need to know is what's the slope uh, ratio of a 70 degree uh, angle. And so I honestly don't even know what that is. So then what I would do is I'd look at my trig table. So then I'm going to go do to 70 degrees. And so I notice 70 degrees takes me to 13.737 over 5. So that's the number I'm going to use in the calculations. So 13.737 over 5. Let's see if I can remember that one. All right, so 13.737 over 5. Was that it? 737? I already forgot. Yeah, 13.737. All right. And so that's uh, how you set it up. So mo notice we really didn't do much work. We just copied down the slope from this triangle and we copied down the slope from the trig table. Uh, at this point, you would uh, multiply this out. I think I'll hold off on that. I'll let you do those. Um, so cross, multiply, uh, and solve. So if you need to check your answers on that one, uh, you could definitely reach out to me and I could give you those answers. All right, uh, and then for B, same idea. I'm gonna set up a proportion. Uh, it's just the easiest thing to do. Stay consistent. Uh, this is gonna be 50 over six, same rise over run. I notice here's the angle, rise over run. All right, so uh, I, like I just said, this is the angle, this is theta. So we don't know what the angle is. So then we can't look it up. So the only thing we can do is look at the ratio and see if maybe we could reduce this and see if that helps us any. Maybe we don't need to, uh, but for the most part, let's just try it. So 50 over six is the same as 25 over three. Uh, so what I'm gonna look for, if the goal is to figure out what theta is, then I'm going to look. I'm going to look in the table for maybe either one of these fractions would be useful. So 25 over 3 or 50 over 6. So I'm going to go to my table and I'll just start at the bottom. All right, I think this is it. 50 over 6, 25 over 3. Uh, found it. So this is going to be 83 degrees. All right, there's the answer. So theta, in this case, I could just say is 83 degrees. And that's it. Uh, so there's not much work there besides just organizing the information. Uh, but I would expect you to do that. Um, if I'm looking at your work, I would expect to see how did you figure out 83 degrees. All right, so uh, set up a proportion always. Uh, same thing on C. I'm going to do, I'm going to set up a proportion. This is 10 over 1. Well, 10 over 1 doesn't really reduce to anything. Um, so I'm just going to leave it as 10 over 1. And so I am still looking for an angle here, right? Just like the previous problem, uh, we're looking for uh, this missing angle. 
So let's look at our trig table. 10 over 1, because uh, I don't have these memorized. 10 over 1, I see it here at the bottom. So that means we're looking at an 84 degrees. All right. So then I could say theta is equal to 84 degrees. So all we're doing is looking things up in the table. Uh, if you're not looking it up to help you finish a problem, like on part A, we look this up so we could solve this. You should have an answer for this at some point. Uh, and then the others, we were just taking these fractions and looking them up in a table to get the answer. All right. Um, let's do a couple more. And so this one, let's see, I'll try to go through these a little bit faster. Well, here I'll let you, in case uh, you want to copy these down. Here's the last four. Um, if you want to try to do those, uh, before I do them, probably want to pause it right now, copy those down, uh, and then see if you get these correct. All right, so I'm going to go over these, set up a proportion. Uh, we have 20 over x. Careful here, uh, the run is on the bottom, right? So rise over run. So 20 over x. So this is going to be a common mistake for some of you. It is not going to be x over 20. All right, that's not correct. Uh, and so what I'm looking for is 8 degrees. So I need to know what 8 degrees is. I need a fraction for that one. Our only option right now is to, to look at our trig table. Hopefully there's an 8 degrees here. All right. So 8 degrees gives us... We, we have two options. We could use 52 over 370 or 26 over 185. So we might as well use the smaller fraction, 26 over 185. All right, 26 over 185. Uh, and then again, we would uh, cross multiply on these to solve this. So you should end up with uh, an answer for X on that one, and then that's it. All right. On those, I'm not going to multiply those out for you. I'll let you do those on your own. Um, that's something I'll check when I look at your work to see if you finish those problems. Um, and so on E, a lot of times people will, maybe you notice this one, there's a zero here. How does that change anything? Uh, it really doesn't. Um, so if we set this up the same way, this would be 0 over 14, right? which is, it's really just 0, right? That's the same as 0 over 0, right? Which is, so if I look at what angle has a slope ratio of 0, well, that one I do not need to look up. So this is theta is going to be zero degrees, All right? So in order for this triangle not to have a height, this it looks like it has a height, but this says zero. So really the triangle is flat, right? This this angle uh, is low. So if you drop this all the way down, then this will become zero. All right, so really, it's impossible to have a triangle that looks like this. But it's not impossible for us to solve this. All right. And then the last two, um, let's see. I'll do it on the side here. We have uh, y over 2 is, is our rise and run. Right? Rise and run. And then I need 89 degrees, uh, so definitely I need to look this up in the table again. Um, I don't have that memorized, and it's at the bottom. So this is going to be 5729 over 100. 5729. 
five seven two nine over one hundred. <coughs> All right, and then again, oops, uh, cross multiply those, and we should be able to solve that. The hard part is just making sure we set up the proportion correctly. All right, and then this last one, uh, I mentioned this kind of earlier. Uh, if you look at this, you should notice uh, we have a right angle, which happens to be 90 degrees, and then there's another 90 degrees. Now, why is that not possible? Well, that means this one must be zero degrees uh, because all three angles are supposed to add up to 180. All right, so if that's zero degrees, right, if this is supposed to be zero, then there's no way this could have a six. All right, so uh, this one is, is designed to kind of trick us. So this is impossible. It's an impossible triangle. All right. Uh, so this is kind of an overview of what we should be able to do. Uh, zoom out on that one. Um, so two of those, three of those, A, D, and F, you should be able to multiply those out and get an answer. Uh, if you need answers to those, just let me know, and I could let you know what those are. Uh, and that's it for these notes. Um, hopefully, uh, this is a type of problem that you don't think is too difficult. All right, we'll see you next time.